Hello, hello, and welcome to another of today's episodes of Saddest Night Out. My name is Roy, and I am the host of this daily podcast, and it's primarily about music and creative culture in London. And this is a slightly late episode because typically on Mondays I do a recap episode where I talk about all that happened in the past week, but I didn't do one of these episodes last week, so apologies for missing out on that. Ah, so it's been a while. Where do I begin? Well, I tell you what, I'll get the number stuff out of the way first, and then I can get a little deeper with all that's been going on these past few days. And by the numbers thing, in case anyone listening is new to this, I typically go over the stats for the past seven days of who's been listening to what, etc. Now, since the podcast has been a little bit quiet, this is going to be interesting because there is something of an expected downturn in listeners because there hasn't been much new stuff to listen to. Now, I've always been of the opinion that if I don't post something new, there's still a massive wealth of episodes to gorge yourself on that I'm sure no one has listened to co- like all the way through, except for maybe my dad. So even if there's no new episode today, there's most likely months and months of episodes from 2018 that you might not have heard yet. So you could always go back and listen to that. But I have the numbers for this week in comparison to the last time I did one of these episodes. So on Monday, the 5th of, the 5th of August is the last time that I did an episode like this where I went over the stats. On that episode, was that the 5th? maybe not hold on what's the date today the day's the 26th so i missed out on the 19th so the last one should be the 12th which it is which i wrote on a different page pardon that by the way this whole episode is done in one take so whatever i don't know sideways turns i take we're all going in on it together so the last episode like this that i did was monday the 12th of august On that week, I'd had 52 plays on SoundCloud. This week, I've had 34 plays. Oh, what else did I learn from SoundCloud? On that week, my most popular episodes were episode 89, a sketch inspired by Interpol, had three plays. My my time at the Sonic Tonic All Day episode number 16 had two plays. And episode number 155 about new music had one play. This week, my top three episodes were, again, episode 89, that sketch inspired by Interpol. I don't know why that one episode is so popular. Maybe that sketch was actually pretty good, but that has nine plays. Episode 155, New Music, has six plays, and episode 208 with Kin Soul has four plays. My top listeners are user 70134438, who listened four times. Pete Buckley, hey Pete, listened three times. And Hazal de Mercy listened twice. My top countries, the UK had 10 plays, America had five, and the Republic of Moldova had four. Hello to the Republic of Moldova. Top cities, Wimbledon had three plays, Hemel Hempstead had two, and Mugler in Turkey, apologies if I'm not, if I'm not saying that right, had two plays over to Podbean, where this time, well, the last time I did an episode like this, I had had 346 plays in a week on Podbean. And this week I had 127. That is what I mean when I say when I disappear for a while, there's a little bit of a downturn in listeners. So I had 841 downloads up almost 200% from this time last month, though I think that is accumulative throughout the month, and also accumulative throughout the month, I guess. In the UK, I had 502 plays, US 230, Japan 29, Ireland 18, and Australia 9. 40% of my downloads came from Spotify, 15% from the Google Chrome browser, 13% from Apple Podcasts and 6% from iTunes. And my top 10 episodes, I guess, thus far this month. In at number 10, it's episode 195 with Rose White and Jack with 25 downloads. Number 9, episode 196 with Joss Mowgli, 26 downloads. Number 8, episode 201 with Jamel Hooper, 26 downloads. Number 7, episode 200 with Mary C. Parker, 27 downloads. Number 6, 
episode 189 with the Corrigan Girls, 30 downloads. Number 5, episode 199 with Pete Buckley, 35 at downloads. Number 4, episode 208 with Kin Soul, 37 downloads. Number 3, episode 206 with two, with See Through Hands, 40 downloads. Number 2, episode 197 with Dan Caleb and Rob Comba, 41 downloads. And in at number 1, episode 198, Elliot Smith's 50th birthday celebrated with 60 downloads. So that's the numbers out of the way. Also, while I'm at it, I meant to do this the last time I did an episode like this. This time I have remembered some new releases that came out last week. Zoe Lilly, who hasn't been on the podcast yet, emphasis on the yet, but she released a new song called Without a Word on Friday. Nielsen Reevely, who has been on the podcast twice, released a new single called Either Side of the Globe. And Lou, who's been on the podcast a few times before, released a new single called Slow It Down. Zoe Lilly spelled Z-O-E-Y. L-I-L-Y. Her song is called Without a Word. Nielsen Reevely, N-I-E-L-S-E-N-R-E-A-V-E-L-E-Y, has a new song called Either Side of the Globe. And Lou has a new song called Slow It Down. Lou is spelled L-O-U-X. Go check those out on Spotify. They are all available. If I remember, I will put links in the notes. So that's the, the numbers game out of the way. Since I was last on this podcast, or since I last did a Monday catch-up episode, I have recorded one, two, three, four, five, six episodes. Episode 207 was with Ben... No. Huh. I put those down. Oh, no. Episode 208 is Kinsol. I thought so. I thought for a second. So on Thursday, the 16th of August, I recorded two conversations, one with Benny Busy, one with Kinsol. And Benny I spoke to before my open mic night at the Nelsons. Kinsol I spoke to after my open mic night at the Nelsons. And I thought I'd numbered them the other way around. So I had Benny Busy, episode 207, Kinsol, episode 208. That was Thursday, the 16th, Tuesday, the 13th. I spoke to See Through Hands, episode 206. That was at Paper Dress Vintage. Episode 209 is with Shane Gabra, which was recorded Sunday the 18th, but is only going up today. Episode 210 was with Marina at my show Tuesday the 20th, but is only going up today. And episode 211 is with Alex Miles, which again was recorded at my show Tuesday 20th, and is only going up today. So... I recorded an episode with Shane Gabra on Sunday the 18th before my open mic at the... Actually, no, let me go right back to the start. So after my last Monday catch-up, I recorded the See Through Hands episode. I reached out to the band on Instagram. They were kind enough to reply. And it was my first time in a while talking to a band band, whatever that means, at one of their shows. But it was a really fun chat. And the secret to it, I think, was that I wasn't too adamant on let's talk about any specific topic. It was more let's just follow where they naturally go. And what I was hinting towards is the fact that they'd been in bands before. And I was curious about the difference between those previous bands and this one. Because See Through Hands is made up with members from previous different bands kind of coming together. So that clearly was a point of interest for the people I spoke to who at this second in time I am completely going blank on specific names but I have my trusty accomplice here in my laptop Duncan and Danny Duncan who sings and plays guitar Danny who plays bass so that was a really fun chat it was great to get out to a gig again I hadn't done that in a while after that I had the two conversations at the Nelsons first with Benny Busy who is an absolute delight fun fact he has played a few open mics of mine and he tends to be the first performer on. He doesn't necessarily sign up to be first, by the way, UKOpenMic.com to check out the open mics they do. He doesn't sign up to be first, but oftentimes whoever signs up before him hasn't arrived yet. So he ends up being first, which is always nerve wracking, whoever does it. But he is such a fantastic performer that I can see the nerves before he starts. But once he starts, I know the audience is right there with him every step of the way. I had an open mic night at the King's Head the Friday just gone 
There was a football match on. There were some drunk football fans at the front, so it could you could tell it would be an uphill battle for whoever went first. And of course, as is his luck, Benny went first, and he absolutely smashed it. And there were some videos on his Instagram as well. Fantastic performer, Ken Soul. I talked to after my open mic night at the Nelsons, and she played my show on Tuesday the twentieth, and. I will talk more about that show a little later. But my chat with her was fantastic because she was really, in I guess, in the mood to talk doesn't seem quite accurate, but she had a lot in her mind and she really is a natural speaker. Whether it's her lyrics or just in conversation, she is about what she represents 24-7. And I think, I hope... I did a good job of capturing that on our episode. Even though I say capturing, I pretty much just pressed record and let her go because when she has something on her mind, she is fantastic at illustrating it so that everyone can see where she's coming from. So that was my second conversation at the Nelsons. Then Sunday the 18th, I had my open mic night at the King's Head and I spoke to Shane Gabra, who's done quite a few, who had done quite a few open mics in a row. I think by the time I post this, he has headed back home. So thank you, Shane. Apologies for taking so long to upload this episode, but thank you for talking to me and safe travels. And I look forward to catching up with you again at some point down the road. Really enthusiastic performer. Great conversation that I had with him. It was just outside the the plow on a Sunday open mic and there was a I remember there was a loud motorbike that drove past about halfway through but generally speaking it was a really fun chat because I did not know much about him at all until we recorded that and then on Tuesday I had my show now I had spent a few nights at Caffrey Studios before my show and I think that's a large part of the reason why there's been a bit of a gap in me uploading episodes because I had to use my laptop to do so, which is unfamiliar for me with regards to uploading podcast episodes. And I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast. By the way, I don't even want to look at how long I've been talking, but 12 minutes. This might be one of those hour-long episodes, folks. Maybe I'm making up for lost time. So if you'd leave now, I understand. I'll catch you on the next episode. Otherwise, here we go. So I spent a few nights at Caffrey Studios because I was trying to prepare for my show. I was trying to get the backing tracks ready to perform with at my show. I didn't end up using any backing tracks. I ended up just playing guitar and singing, and I think it was my best performance yet. I also didn't headline at this show. Kinsol was working that same night and was going to come by just after she finished her DJ session and asked if she could go on last because she finishes DJing at night. Now, she told me this. I had a reggae band in at Cafe Studios over the weekend, and there was a bit of drama with their planned gig, which made me think I should really get my act together with making sure we're all set up, <coughs> pardon me, for my show on Tuesday. So I sent, got in the group text, sent out to everyone, hey, are we all you know ready, and this is the lineup and everything, everything, etc., and Kim Sol said, that sounds great, but... Actually, no, it can't have been Saturday. It must have been Friday when I did this. Kim Sol said, yep, sounds great, but could I go on last because I'm working, etc. Now, my initial knee-jerk reaction to this was, what? Almost real a sense of, how dare you? This is my show. A large part of the reason I put this show together is to headline, and you just want to take my spot, blah, 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 blah. That feeling lasted about two train stations because I was on my way to the Friday open mic and then I agreed to do it before I could think myself out of it I thought it would be a good exercise I don't know in what in humility well actually what I thought most was I just had a really good heart to heart with Kim Sol I can't then next day turn around and say no you either play when I tell you to or you don't play or anything like that we are, and I couldn't help but sympathise. We're all young, or I like to—I like to think of myself as young. Okay, yes, I know I turned thirty, but I still think of myself as young. We're all relatively young, and trying to get by in this city, and it's not an easy task. Far be it for me to really stand in the way of someone trying to juggle all that they need to juggle in order to survive in this city. So, that moment of what do you call it? Not not rage, but 
ah, when you feel like someone stepped on your toes or something, that feeling passed. And I said, yeah, sure. And I decided to just swap places with her. So instead of shifting the whole lineup around, I went on second and Kin Sol went on last. And it was the first step in a whole new approach to these shows. Firstly, I didn't do the whole welcome everyone to my show or anything like that because Izzy was on first. And just before she went on, I said, would you like anything like a glass of water? She said, yes, please. So I went upstairs to get it. And by the time I came down, she had started. So I didn't get a chance to introduce her. And then I thought, let me go with this. Let me let each artist introduce themselves. So I was second and I actually did introduce myself. I think if you listen back to my episode from the previous show, I talk about how I didn't even say the name of my of my band or as me as an artist. I just played and then made some small talk. But this time I tried to treat myself the way I would expect any other artist or any other band to treat themselves instead of always putting myself last or denigrating myself, if that's even the word. No, I you know, spoke with my whole chest and stood in my own right as an artist. And it felt really good to do. Then after me, we had Rose White and Jack and then we had Kim Soul. It was a fantastic night. As you hopefully would have heard by now, on my episode with Marina, I had a few people come to the show who didn't come because they knew me personally or knew one of the artists personally. They came because it was a show in London that they wanted to check out. And that to me is, to put it bluntly, that's where the money is. That's where I should be aiming squarely. Yes, you will have to most likely start by somewhat coercing your friends and colleagues and family, etc. to come and check you out in the beginning. But if you want to have a career in this, you can't always be relying on just those people who know you personally. At some point, what you do has to appeal to people without them knowing who you are. And I got the slightest of glimpses of that at the show on Tuesday. It was a great night. And hopefully by now you've heard me talk to Marina, who came to the show without knowing who was at the show or anything, just came because she's a music enthusiast. And hopefully you will have heard me talking to Alex Miles, who was the sound engineer for the show and also has many other musical pursuits that he talked about on our chat and also went to his first festival recently, Arc Tangent, which sounds like a really niche but really dream festival to go to. It was a good night, but I know I've done three of these shows now and there's still so much more I could be doing to drum up interest. I posted the event on Facebook. I didn't think to invite anyone via Facebook. And for anyone who doesn't know, on Facebook you can post up events, but you are supposed to invite everyone you know to that event And doing so automatically puts it on their calendar. So whether they come or not, they are aware that it's happening. And thus there's an increased chance that they'll come. And also anyone who follows that person will also see, I think so, don't completely quote me on this, but I think if I invite Jim, it doesn't matter whether Jim says he will come or not. On Jim's calendar, there will be my event, so he'll have a constant reminder But also on Jim's timeline, my event will appear. So anyone who is friends with Jim or follows Jim will also see my event. I've been led to believe that's how events and inviting works. If I am incorrect, feel free to let me know. Saddestnightout at gmail.com. So I invited people. Well, I posted the event, but I didn't invite anyone. So I got about two thirds or one third of the way towards putting the event out there more. We still had a great turnout. But I feel I am not doing right by my other performers at my show yet. And I just... September, basically... I mean, every instance of me doing that is an opportunity for me to learn from what I've done. But the key thing is that I would learn by doing rather than forever postpone making a start because I fear there's more I could learn. Sometimes you just have to roll up your sleeves and do it and learn as you go. So I, at least I have that. But that I can't be saying that every time I put on a show. Well, I will be saying that every time I put on a show. But it can't be the same mistakes or the same oversights that I'm making with each show. Also, 
I can't even remember if I already said this on this episode. Apologies if you just heard me burp there. But I spent a few nights at Cafe working on my backing tracks and didn't use them because I spent so long procrastinating because of the novelty of staying over at Caffrey overtook the necessity, the utility of the place. The first, t- the, well, the first day I was here, I was in a room that doesn't have great internet reception and I spent more time being frustrated that I couldn't have something on in the background than on actually working on my music. So truth be told, come the day of the show, my backing tracks weren't where I wanted them to be and I didn't want to have my lyrics on stage again. So I thought, no, I'm going to play the songs I am confident with, with just a guitar. That way, I want to focus on the performance, not on whether or not I get the songs right. Because the idea is, you should rehearse and learn your material, so when you're on stage, you're focusing on performing to the crowd. Because knowing the lyrics and knowing the chords, etc., is like muscle memory. It's just autopilot. You know how to play it. It's about focusing on how you communicate your message to the audience. And I think I did the best job of that that I've done yet at that show. So while I didn't get my backing tracks where I wanted them to be, my performance was a lot better. And maybe that tension between where I wanted to be and where I was fed into that. Either way, thank you to everyone who came to the show. And thank you to Marina and Alex for being on the podcast after the show. So I spoke to them both and now I am doing this, and those are all the episodes I've done since the last catch-up. See Through Hands, Benny Busy, Kin Soul, Shane Gabra, Marina, and Alex Miles. I... There was a bit of a issue family-wise, because I was meant to go home after my show, but I ended up staying at Cafe Studios one more night, but I made that classic mistake of not telling everyone where I was, so there was a bit of a panic. And yeah, I have been staying here for a while, but it's not not something that one would recommend. It's not the best of places to stay long term. People have done it before, and it's mainly people that work here. It's not something that's just offered out at large. Some of us that work here, sometimes you work, like at most workplaces, sometimes you work place and you end up just staying the night instead of going home. It was very much an element of that. But as great as this place is resource-wise, I can't let it become another plateau because I'm so good at doing that. I mean, this podcast is a great example. It has served a great purpose. It has helped me to get out of my comfort zone, helped me to meet people, helped me... Me working on my own music has actually come to a bit of a pause, but I have led it has led to me putting on shows. So it's helped me to really focus on progression with whatever I wanted to do. Otherwise, you'd hear the same episode over and over. And yet, on a certain level, I think you have heard the same episode over and over because there's been a lot of episodes of talking to people at the open mics. So to a certain degree, this podcast has become a plateau. Me hosting open mic nights has become a bit of a plateau. I can't let working at Caffrey become the same thing. Every new frontier I take on has to lead to the next new frontier. It can't become my resting stop and five years from now I'm still hosting open mics and my music is completely on the back burner. No, I have to remember that at the forefront of all of this are my ambitions with my music. I mean, at this early part of this podcast, at the end of each episode, I would talk about what I've done with my music. I think it's safe to say maybe the last, I don't know, 30, 40 odd episodes, it's mainly been about introducing who I talk to, talking to the person, and then recapping how I came to talk to them. And that's it. I don't even mention myself or the fact that I make music as loads of Japanese bands, as much as I originally intended to on this podcast. So, there's, as always, there's lessons to be learned and improvements to be made. But the main reason why there's been such a gap in posting episodes is that I am, even this episode, you, me talking to you right now, is being done from Caffrey Studios, which is why you can't hear my computer humming in the background. 
you might be able to hear the, the faint rumblings of the London Overground, which goes above this train, above this go, the train tracks for the London Overground go above this rehearsal studio. I am in between Hoxton Station and Haggerston Station. In fact, as well as recording these episodes, I did take part in a music video for uh, an artist named Jim Jr., who I was introduced to thanks to Canadian Ken. I have a couple of friends named Ken, so I will call Canadian Ken, Canadian Ken, so you know exactly who I'm talking to, who I'm talking about. He said, have you heard about this guy, Jim? He's a friend of his, he's an artist. I looked him up on Instagram. On his Instagram, he mentioned he was about to shoot a music video and was looking for extras. I volunteered as tribute, which is a quote from the Hunger Games movies moving swiftly on. I said I'd be up for it. We ended up filming around the Dalston Junction train station area, which isn't too far from Caffrey Studios. We were filming all sorts of things up until about 4 a.m. And if I was having to head back home home, that would have been a two, three, goodness knows how many hour journey back home on night buses. But thanks to staying at Caffrey, it was a 20 minute walk. And I honestly for a moment thought, man, if, if life was like this, I can see now why people go to clubs till 4 a.m. or whatever, if the journey home is this easy. <laughs> My journey home typically isn't. So I'm in no hurry. I'm not in no hurry to pick up that lifestyle now. But it is an awfully convenient place to have. But I have to keep in prime focus why I'm here in the first place. The experience, what I have to learn, and also to work on my own music. So I made a list of 52 songs that are in various stages of completion in my mind. And I created folders for all 52 of those songs. And there's actually more since then. And the aim is to create, I even created a bit of a, ta uh, what do you call it, sort of a checklist that I can go through with each of those songs. And that checklist is as follows. So I have the list of all of the songs. The first thing I want to do is record a rough guy, just a rough guitar and bass. So when I open that folder, open that file, I can press play and think, oh, okay, this is this song. Because a lot of these songs don't have names, so they have somewhat code names. But it's easy to forget what those code names are. So now I can open up the file, press play, and think, oh, okay, so that code name is for this song. So first I want to record a rough guide. Then I want to make bookmarks for each song. That is where, on the screen, you can label parts of the track that are the verse 1, chorus 1, verse 2, chorus 2, whatever you want to label it, you can. Then I want to put the rough drums down and then a better bass, a better guitar, better drums, write lyrics, record vocals. I'm just, I want to be real factory machine about it. They, like Motown, or I can't even think of a better example, but basically, so you can almost get into autopilot and churn it out because that is my focus now. I've been sitting on a lot of this stuff for so long. I just want to churn it out so that it doesn't only exist in my mind. There's a tangible version of these ideas. Because once I have something tangible, once I have something that I can press play on and someone else can hear, then I can get that much closer to finishing it, teaching it to a band, playing it at a show, releasing it, etc. So that is what I intend to do here at Caffrey because I can set up my laptop my Focusrite interface, plug in my guitars to my laptop and record that stuff. And then if I want to, I can plug my laptop into one of the PA systems in one of the rehearsal studios and treat it like I'm playing a show and play along to the backing track. That is what I can do. That is what I will do. But up to now, that is not what I've been doing, except for today. Today, Monday 26th. I have been really burning through a whole bunch of these tracks, these folders, and creating files with just rough guides, things that I can build upon later. I could even take my laptop home and work on putting in the drums there because the drums are just samples I have from an old keyboard that I can drag into place just so I have something. And then I can bring my laptop back, record more guitars or vocals, etc. So that's what I want to focus on for myself. 
As for the podcast and interviews, well, hopefully I can upload all of this today from Caffrey and it will sound okay because I'm using different software. At home, I use Sonar, which is made by Cakewalk. In the studio, I am using something different. And I think that made me a bit anxious about putting episodes up. What if they don't sound as good? So on and so forth. But I'm just going to do it. Hopefully it sounds okay so I can get back to regularly interviewing people and uploading those episodes every day. September is around the corner and I really want to fill my calendar with just as many people and topics as possible to really (laughs) bump up the numbers of episodes that I have. As well as complete a website and establish more of a digital presence of what Saddest Night Out is. So, record as many demos as I physically can. Get back into the regular cycle of posting episodes. And get more consistent in establishing my digital presence when it comes to social media and Saddest Night Out. So that's where my head is at. That's why I've been away for a while. Thank you again to everyone who came to the show. Thank you to Rob Comba for putting a shout out to my podcast on his podcast, which is called My Favourite Elliot Smith Song, available on all podcast platforms. The premise is that he talks to well-known people about their favourite Elliot Smith song. And of course, I met Rob Comba. And found out about his podcast on what is to date, or what is currently my most popular episode, according to Podbean, episode 198, when I went to the tribute show. Oh, and 197 as well. When I went to the tribute show to Elliot Smith, which was hosted by Dan Caleb and Rob Comber. Rob Comber has just posted episode number... Well, it's a bit different because he's got different seasons. But on August the 22nd, he posted what's labelled as number eight, Laura Stevenson. Not only does he give me a shout out on that episode, but Laura Stevenson's Laura Stevenson's favourite Elliot Smith song is the same as my favourite Elliot Smith song, which is Roman Candle from his debut album, which I mentioned on those episodes 197 and 198. And I was a bit annoyed because now if I ever end up on his podcast, and who knows, touch wood, maybe that might happen. Dan Caleb, who I spoke to with Rob on that episode 197, talks about how he sent a message to Rob saying, I hope someday I'm well known enough to warrant being on your podcast. And lo and behold, Dan Caleb has now been on that podcast. So who knows, maybe if I speak it into the ether, it might come true. If I ever end up on the My Favourite Elliot Smith Song podcast, someone else has taken the song that I would have done, which is Roman Candle. I have called, I sent that message to Rob, you know, in jest, in humour, but I've called dibs on a different song. I won't even mention what that song is on here, in case someone else does it. So, (laughs) I don't know how long you'll have to watch this space for, but watch this space. And also, don't forget the releases that I hyped up. Zoe Lilly, Nielsen Reevely, and Lou... Go and check them out. Let's spread the love here on this podcast. Let's continue our work in elevating some of the phenomenal talent that we have on this podcast. I went to see Moon perform at the Nelsons yesterday, Sunday 25th, and he was fantastic as ever. Hello to Moon and to Maureen if you listen to this. Uh, Skeletons are playing a show next week, 1st of September. I can't remember where, but I intend to go to that show I am racking my brains if there's anything else that I missed. And if there is, I will maybe bring it up on the next episode. But otherwise, I've been on here for 33 minutes. I don't know how loud I've been because I've forgotten where to hold my phone with regards to my mouth. So apologies if you have to squint your ears to hear some of this. But if there's anyone still listening up to this point, thank you very much for listening. Apologies again for making you wait. Maybe I shouldn't apologise. You know, life gets in the way, etc. But I will anyway. Apologies for being away for a while. Mainly to the people I spoke to that you've had to wait before your episode gets out there. But thank you all for talking to me. Thank you all for listening. Feel free to reach out to me on any social media at Saddest Night Out. Except TikTok and Snapchat. I don't know. At some point, you pass a certain age where you just think, maybe it's not for me. But you can email me saddestnightout at gmail.com. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next episode. That's enough ranting and rambling for now. 
My voice is even hoarse from it all. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, folks.